I'm seriously attracted to the stuff in your trailer. How do you make money for nothing? Is it a trampoline or a bed? Well, if we get out, we could have a jump on it. The answer could be hiding in the 30 million tonnes of household waste we throw out every year. They are ready to be re-loved again, don't you think? That's why entrepreneur Sarah Moore wants to get her hands on things before they hit the skip. Must be 100 years old, mustn't it? It looks it. I love old stuff. Finding it, buying it and reusing it. And I've turned that passion into a business. Transforming items that nobody wants into things that I can sell for a profit. And with some of the country's elite designers and makers... Oh, what have you got? They are a bit weird, aren't they? I love them. She can transform her finds into desirable... Oh, they're beautiful. A labour of love. Valuable. I've never seen anything like that. And hopefully saleable items. Martin, those are amazing. Thanks very much. If Sarah is successful, oh. then she can hand the profits yeah. back to the very people who had no idea there was cash to be made from their trash. I have got £270 oh, here. How much? It's a busy day at the Canesham Recycling Centre near Bristol, with locals lining up to fill the skips with their unwanted whatnots. But here to save the best bits from the crusher is the revamper of rubbish, Sarah Moore. I bet you a nice cup of tea and a biscuit that I can find three amazing things here at the Recycling Centre that I can turn a profit on. Earl Grey, chocolate chips, please. OK, get searching and I'll put the kettle on. Sarah has special permission to peruse the boots for things she can take, transform and hopefully sell on for cash. Are you coming back with anything else? She's a cheeky one. Tim's arrived. Will the contents of his boot be to Sarah's liking? Hello there. Hi there. I am Sarah. My name's Tim. Tim, what's that? It's uh, an old army camp bed. It was used by my wife's grandfather. Gosh, how old would that be then? I think back in the 40s, 50s, I would have said. Did it see service then, do you think? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure he slept on it many a time there, yeah. I, I've used it myself. The last time would have been late 80s. Wow, and um, I have to ask, is it comfortable? Uh, it is in summer. Right. I find it gets very cold in the winter because you've got a draft underneath it's... and there's no padding between you and the cold ground. I can see why it's got to go. It's certainly not the kind of thing that you gravitate towards for a comfortable night's sleep, but I kind of think that it should be saved. Personally, if anyone could do anything with it, I'd be more than happy. I can't think of anything I could do with it. So. It has potential because it's old, um, and maybe I can make something out of it that kind of pulls at people's heartstrings. So can I have it? Absolutely you can. So if I come up with a bright idea, is it possible to come and see you and show you what I've done with it? Yeah, I'd be delighted. Excellent. I shall take that off your hands and be very pleased. Very good. So, Sarah's first find is a canvas camp bed. Tim, any thoughts on what she might do with it? Uh, do you know, I really don't know. I mean, th there's plenty of canvas there that could be cut out or used to make other fabric pieces, perhaps, of some sort, but I don't know. <laughs> I'd be scratching my head. It's a head scratcher, all right. I can't imagine having to sleep on a bed like this every night. But the condition of it is actually really not bad, considering its age. I think it's got all the bits there. The canvas is sturdy and it's a great colour. If I like it, somebody else is going to like it too, aren't they? So, which maker does Sarah think will be the perfect fit for this bed? It's leather legend Uzo Okwosa. From belts to bags to wallets, Uzo's unwavering attention to detail means everything he creates is handmade perfection. I worked in IT before I discovered leather. Um, it was a hobby, um, but no, yeah, I taught myself how to work with leather and ever since then I've been doing it since. It doesn't feel like a job. Every day isn't, I'm not ticking boxes when I come in here, I'm not writing reports. So no typical day, it's all fun, um, but it gets serious as well with leather. There's a load of old canvas coming your way, Uzo. You could have your work cut out going hell for leather on this lot. With one item in the bag... Now that's what you call a spade. Sarah will need to dig deep to find another two. 
James and William have arrived. But what are they pulling out of their boots? Hello there. Nice gate. How do you do? I'm Sarah. Hi there. Hi there. What are your names? James and William. Hello. I like the gate. You've definitely had that a while, haven't you? Yeah, we've had it a long time. Been our front gate for 17, 18 years. But I've known the gate for about 40 years. Okay. Because I lived opposite it. Ah, how funny. Great, so you haven't moved far then? No. Well, I love the idea of you knowing that for ages. I really like the drain cover. Yeah, it's solid. Where's that from? Our back drain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm We've got a new one. We've just done the patio and uh, got right. a nice new shiny cover. Can you see potential in making it into something else? Yeah, I'm not sure what. If it'd be okay, can I have it? Certainly can. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. I shall keep in touch. Thank you. Nice to meet you both. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Sarah's saved a metal gate and a drain cover. What's she going to do with that? James, William, you surprised she's taken them on? A bit surprised she wanted the uh, drain. <laughs> but the gate is interesting because it's old. So we'll look forward to seeing what she does with it. Are you keen? For me, if it's old, it's gold. And a little manhole cover like that is just cute. I've never seen one that teeny before. And the gate, heaps of material here. It's old, it's still really nice and solid. And you know what those clever people who work with metal can do. Make something fabulous, I think. So which creative maker does Sarah think can open up a new future for the gate and drain cover? Kev Paxton is a traditional blacksmith with a flair for the artistic. Give Kev any old iron and he can hopefully shape it into a scrap metal sculptural showstopper. The fact that I can take old pieces of scrap metal and then turn it into something with a, a cool new life is, is really good. I wouldn't describe what I do as a job. OK, it pays my bills, but I do it for the love um, and I just... I just feel very privileged that I can, you know, hit a piece of hot metal and turn it into something that people like smile about. And that, that's, that's what, you know, drives me forward is people smiling at what I do. Well, Kev, let's hope the smile isn't wiped from your face when you see the rusty gate and drain cover Sarah's sending your way. Two items saved. Sarah can't call it a day yet. Oh dear, oh dear, what have you been breaking up? If she's to find something she can work on herself, she'll need to step things up. Everybody ready? It's time for Tip Fit with Sarah. I think that's how you do it. Sonia's arrived. But will she have anything that's fit for a makeover? Hello there. Hi. Hi, hi, I'm Sarah. Hi, I'm Sonia. Sonia? Wow, what a retro-looking thing. How long have you had it? It's been in my garage for at least 10 years. Um, came from a house that we bought a lady off. That it must have been in her house for at least 60 years. OK. Um, and it looks a bit skew. Have you taken the top off? I have. I took it off, um, basically, to be able to get it in the car. But apart oh. from that, it does attach to the base as well. So and it's, quite, it's quite solid. It's not wobbly or anything like that. Well, it's really interesting because I, I, I see a lot of these and they've been making them for years. The style hasn't changed. There's all sorts of repro ones. And is it actually a metal base? It is, yes. Why has it ended up here today? Time to have a clear out. My garage is full of everything and anything. So we've just decided it is time to go. I think it's got potential that people would like it. Good. I hope somebody can enjoy it because it seems a shame just to put it over there. Yeah, let me take it off your hands. And if Perfect. I can redo the top or make it look lovely again, can I show you what I've done with it? Yeah, that's lovely. I'll take that and I'll be back for the base. Perfect. Thanks, Brilliant. Everybody. Thanks very much. Sarah's final find of the day is a retro table. Any thoughts on what she might do with it, Sonia? I have no idea. Probably clean it up, maybe do the base a little bit more better so that it looks a little bit more modern and new. Um, but anything I think that she does with it will be amazing. What's not to love about a tulip table, apart from the condition of this one? The top's OK, the legs, I think, are definitely aluminium. It could be, well, 11 years old, or it could be an original. So heaps to find out about this one, and definitely work to do on it if it's going to turn a profit. And with that, Sarah has all her items. Uzo will have a heavy-duty challenge on his hands, converting the old canvas into bags. Kev's task is to work his metal magic on the old gate and drain cover. 
And Sarah has a tulip table to transform, but can she make it bloom? Well, I can't take it all home, but I have cherry-picked my way through the rubbish here today. And I've found three things I think have got real transformational potential. Hard work, loads of design to do, and some help from my friends needed. In London, Sarah's about to drop off the canvas bed to the man who loves all things leather, Uzo. I think it's always nice having something that's lived another life and I get a chance to kind of give it a new purpose again. So, yeah, it's a challenge. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I just hope it's not too much of a challenge. Well, my poor old camp bed has seen conflict in the war. It's seen camping in the countryside and it's seen an awful lot of the inside of a garage. So I'm hoping that Uzo is going to put it on a pedestal, give it the respect it deserves. Uzo, hi, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? I've got something lovely for you. Oh. <laughs> something old that needs a new purpose. It's got canvas. It's a canvas. It's a camp bed. Oh, it's a bed. Wonderful. What do you think of it? Well, it's not leather, um, but I do really like canvas. So, I'm liking the colour. It might need a bit more enriching, but I think, yeah, we can definitely make something out of this. So I was hoping that you could do something with this that incorporates maybe some newer leather with as much of this as possible. I just thought, it really lends itself to, you know, sort of big, heavy-duty bags that are for shopping or weekend bags or open to offers, really. I quite like the material as it is, but maybe change a few things about it. I could dye it. Right. I could also wax it, make it waterproof, depending on what I'm going to make from it. So what bags do you think would be good out of this? My initial thoughts, tote bag. OK. So how many do you think you're going to get out of here? Hopefully two. But if I can't squeeze two tote bags out of it, then I can definitely make some smaller accessories, like a wash bag, uh, something more functional that goes within the bag. Go on, then. Hit me with the budget. What's it going to be? So I think I'm thinking 250 I think that's fab. So 250 and I might end up with a pair of tote bags or one tote bag and accessories as well, still for 250 That's right. Yeah. Perfect. So nice to see you. Thanks for coming by, giving us another challenge. Ah, uh, you love a challenge. Good luck with it. Bye-bye. That's the creative part done, now is the execution part. So now let's just hope I can actually get it together and make it and have it looking real good for when Sarah comes back. I love Uzo's enthusiasm. He's talking about waxing and cutting and dyeing and making all sorts of different bags out of that old camp bed. But I really hope those processes go well because there's quite a lot of money on the table, so they'll have to look mint if we're going to make a profit. Uzo has a budget of £250. Canvas isn't a material he usually works with, so trying to produce two tote bags from a camp bed could result in some sleepless nights. Just outside Edinburgh, the iron gate and drain have arrived with blacksmith Kev. Sarah's had this gate and a couple of bits of manhole covers dropped off, so it's going to be interesting. I've got a few ideas myself, but Sarah's always full of really good ideas, so I'm looking forward to hearing what she has to say. Hello. Hi, Kev, how are you? Hi, Sarah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? OK, good. Um, have the gate and drain cover arrived? I'm standing beside them right now. What do you think? Um, I was kind of hoping the drain covers were a mistake and they'd come, like, by default, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, um... no, it's not a mistake. I was actually wondering about the possibility of incorporating both items into a new gate. Do you think that would work? Yeah, yeah. I've got I've got this wee sort of mad idea kicking in my head, so I could keep it as a gate, cut it up, use the metal again, use the cover, but I don't think I could use the frame. They're really brittle, but the lid I can probably use. So I can't galvanise the cast iron lid, so I'll, I'll bolt it in take it out, galvanise the gate, and then it comes back, I'll bolt it back in. That sounds really cool. And do you think you'll be able to use all of the material? Um, if I'm going to use the material, there isn't really a lot to work with. If I keep it the same size, so I'll probably cut it up a wee bit, do something more interesting with it. OK, no problem. How much is it going to cost? <sighs> oh, uh, always put my foot in it. I'm going to need to ask for quite a bit to do that amount of work, so I've got to say 900. OK, it does sound like a lot of work, so 900 is fine. I'll let you get on with it. Cheers, Sarah. Thank you. Good luck. Bye. Bye. 
Sarah, I, I think she liked my idea. She said it's okay not to use the, the frame because I think it'll just break, so it's a shame putting that in, but I'm looking forward to getting sat in this one. It's going to be fun. Kev has a whopping £900 to create a garden gate, but will making a drain cover decorative prove to be too much of a challenge? With Uzo and Kev raring to go, Sarah's about to get to work on the tulip table. I love a tulip table. The condition is pretty tricky. I have no idea if the melamine top is actually going to clean up and the base has been repainted. So I've got a lot of work to do if I'm going to make it saleable as it is. Originals with marble top can cost thousands. And I'm thinking condition may mean that I actually have to update it and perhaps add some colour as well. So plenty to be getting on with, but I think it's rubber gloves on first. Most of my jobs begin with cleaning. Sarah is starting by cleaning off any dirt and grime with a bleach solution. And it looks as if someone wants to help. You need to go because I've got a table to restore. Off you go. Tulip tables have been in production since the 1950s. But with no maker's marks on the table, Sarah doesn't think it's an original. Good job. You can almost see your face in that, Sarah. There's paint on this bit, so definitely a good idea to wear a mask. Next, Sarah's tackling the table base. Been in a garage for ages, and the aluminium has actually started to bubble and corrode a bit. But I think I can probably get a good enough surface on it to be able to respray it. Next, Sarah's applying a base coat of white metal paint that she's hoping will cover the table's imperfections. Well, the base coat is all dried now. But it's time to mask. This could be fun. I think I need to add some detail. Sarah's plan is to add colour to liven up the table. She wants to go for a two-tone effect and is masking off the sections that won't be painted. So that masking tape has just taken off the paint. Oh, dear. That wasn't supposed to happen. If the masking tape's removing the paint rather than protecting it, Sarah's vision of a two-tone base could be out of the window. Time to spray. What do you reckon, Bramble? Margot? Pink? I think they're wondering why you haven't gone to plan B. Sarah is getting spraying, despite her worries that when she removes the masking tape, her lovely white base coat could come off with it. Looks like the kind of thing you see graffitied on a wall somewhere, doesn't it? I hope it looks better in a minute. You're the Banksy of upcycling, Sarah. I often find there's a stage in my projects where they look really awful in the middle, but you just have to plough on and have faith. Well, let's hope it doesn't look even worse once the tape comes off. Here goes. Here it comes. This is not my favourite project at the moment. That didn't go too well. So far, Sarah spent £15.40 pence on the project. But her hopes of producing an appealing table could be scuppered if her masking tape doesn't play ball. Back in London. Uzo's getting cracking on the canvas bed. Ooh, that looks different. As you can see, the colour's changed. Give it a good wash and have dyed it. And it's really brought out the look of the canvas now as well, so that's great. Uzo's plan is to attempt to make two totes. And his first job is to create a bag template that he'll cut from. I have my main template done now for the main body. I'm just being mindful of how much um, canvas I'm going to use, um, making it large enough to make a good, useful size bag, but also making sure I can make two tote bags um, with some front pockets. Next, Uzo is checking that his template is big enough to fit all the essentials in. And I think we've got it. Happy with the size, Uzo needs to find out whether or not there's enough canvas to make two bags. Oh, just. So, yeah, I think we're going to get two tote bags out of this. Tote's brilliant. Sarah will be pleased. Uzo is steaming ahead and is giving the canvas a once-over with the iron. 
Is this one of your favourite parts of the bag making process? <laughs> Not at all, but I need to get this as flat as possible to get a really good cut out of it. Perfect. With the material smooth, Uzo is marking out where he'll cut the material in half. First cut. But it doesn't look like the scissors are going through easily. This is the hardest part, but once I cut through, which I have now, it'll be easier. Uzo has just enough material for two totes, so every snip is crucial. That's cool. I make tote bags a lot, but from leather. And not quite this design, so this is a little bit different from the usual bags that I make. It gets a bit daunting, but you get lost in the process as well, so it's quite therapeutic and calming. Next, Uzo is using a rotary cutter to remove the excess canvas before marking out where the bag seam will be. Let's come and scale. OK, I think it's time to stitch. I actually love sewing. It gets a bit tense sometimes, but I enjoy it. Uzo is adding a seam that will run down the centre of the bag. Making sure I'm keeping things straight. And that's that. Sarah asked Uzo to incorporate some leather into the tote bags. And next, he's cutting out pieces that will form the base of the new bags. Just reinforce the bag, make it a bit more durable, putting it down, picking it up. Uzo is using edge paint to finish the raw leather. It's a fiddly job that he needs to get right. You can spill it, you can go over the edge. So, yeah, you can mess up in many different ways, but we're not going to do that today. Let's hope not. With the edge paint dry, Uzo is now gluing the new leather base to the tote bag. It's got to be quick. Time is of the essence before it dries on. Right, exactly where I need it to be. So this is my base. I'm going to stitch it together and then take it from there. The bag components are getting there, but Uzo still has a long way to go until he has the two trendy totes he's promised Sarah. <laughs> on the outskirts of Edinburgh, Kev is already out of the gate, getting to work on the rusty items Sarah sent his way. His plan is to incorporate them into one new gate, and his first job is to see what he's got to work with. Start cutting and go, oh, what have I done? You know, I think, should I just add it to all of them? So, usually me, I've just given myself twice the amount of work that I should have, so... Keep going. So that was someone's pride and joy. Nice wee garden gate. Along comes a heavy-handed Scots guy and destroys it in five minutes. Sorry. With the gate now cut into parts that he needs, Kev is sketching out how his new gate, complete with drain cover, will look. We're dying to see this, Kev. What was the frame of the gate? I'm going to make it like, I don't know, sort of paving shapes, maybe, out of the edge of the drain cover and the cracks in the pavement, all these flowers are going to grow. Hopefully it'll work. We'll keep our fingers crossed. With his plan in place, Kev is getting to work heating the metal bars he wants to forge into decorative branches that he hopes will give the gate a nature-inspired look. This was the upright of the gate, and it's got to mean the upright of the gate. What I'm doing is it's sort of moving itself. As I'm handed, I'm going to make them a wee bit messy. So this is like the perfect job. This is like, it's kind of arty, but it doesn't have to be right. So if it's wrong, it's right. So there's absolutely no pressure. Not sure Sarah would agree with you, Kev. She's got a huge budget riding on this gate and needs it to be spot on. The bars are shaping up nicely. But Kev now needs to focus on making the drain cover decorative. That's three words you don't usually hear together. What I'm going to do, I'm going to attempt to do this. This, this could all go wrong here. This hole 
It looks cool, but I'm actually going to try and cut it out with the plasma cutter. So cut it out here, and then what will happen is I'll put some of the flowers will come up here, come through here like that, and up like what would have been the sides, the cracks. And this is where the sort of weeds and the flowers will grow from. So this being cast iron, um, cast iron is very brittle. So sometimes we put heat near it, and all of a sudden you get. It just like falls to bits. Whenever you hear you've got cast iron at work, you're just like, oh no. But that's just me. When I find out there's only two slices of toast instead of three, I go, oh no. Kev is using a plasma cutter to remove the center circle. But there's a real risk that applying heat will shatter it and make the drain cover unusable. So, how's it looking, Kev? I think we're OK. Phew, your plan would have been well and truly down the drain if it had crumbled. Kev wants the drain cover to be the focal point of the gate. And next, he's working out just how big it's going to be. Did we tell Sarah our size? Uh, no. It's kind of narrow. Well, it's all right. I'd just about squeeze through it. Hope Sarah likes that. Sarah has a huge budget riding on this gate, but if it's too narrow for anyone to use, any hopes of making a profit could be slowly draining away. Back home in Sussex, Sarah's putting the finishing touches to the tulip table. Certainly added some colour. Hope it's enough to transform it. When Sarah found the table, it was about to be relegated to the skip. But now... It's been revamped and is ready to take centre stage in any modern dining room. The Formica tabletop has been scrubbed and smoothed and Sarah has polished it up to make it shine. The two-tone table base didn't work as Sarah had hoped, so instead she's covered every inch of it in colour. She opted for a bright and bold colour palette to make the table stand out. And it's been finished off with imitation gold leaf and copper detail. But has Sarah done enough to get it back in someone's home? I definitely need a sit down because I have been round the houses on this table. I thought it might be nice if it was simple and sophisticated, but as usual, I just couldn't help myself. I've used geometric influences from the 60s and 70s to try and give it some context as well as some colour. And I'm hoping the pizzazz equals a sale. When Sarah met Sonia, she loved the look of her table. It's been in my garage for at least 10 years. Sonia no longer had space for it. My garage is full of everything and anything, so we've just decided that it's time to go. So Sarah whisked it away, leaving Sonia wondering what she could do with it. Probably clean it up, maybe do the base a little bit more better so that it looks a little bit more modern and new. Um, but anything I think that she does with it will be amazing. Well, Sonia, just wait until you see its new look. Sarah wasted no time in sharing photos online. But did she manage to find a buyer? Sarah's in Bath to catch up with Sonia and show her how her tables turned out. Sonia, hi, nice to see you again. Nice to see you. How are you? Well, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very well, very well. And um, you were turning up at the tip the last time I saw you with such a stylish table. But it wasn't always yours, was it? No, we bought it and well, it was came with the house that we bought and put it down in the garage and that's where it's lived for the last 10 years. I did look at the table and I made sure it wasn't an original, but I have done something to it that's a bit radical. So I'm interested to see what you think. It now has a new lease of life and it looks like that. Oh, wow! That looks amazing. It has got a, a really bold look, but I thought if it was going to sell and make an impact, that lovely shape could take a little bit of updating. Oh, that looks really good, actually. Uh, so I thought it could have a, a bit of an update, and I've uh, given the, the base um, a new look with some gold leaf and some lots of colour on it. I love it. 
absolutely love it. I'll have it back now. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could. I wish you could. Um, it's something that has actually caught somebody else's eye. So it's gone off to a new home as well. A private buyer has it. So it's already in use and back in somebody's house and, and turned a profit as well for you. So I've got £370.50. I'm amazed, absolutely amazed. That's so good. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, it's a complete pleasure. Some money there. What might you do with it? I'm going to take my family out for a lovely meal because we've had a bit of a tough time and then I'm going to donate half of it to the charity Mind, who I work for now. Oh, amazing. Oh, well, two great things to do with that. I hope yeah. you have a lovely evening out and a fantastic cause, well worth supporting. Thank you very much. So nice to see you again. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Sarah's costs the transform the table came to £24.50. It was sold for £395, leaving Sonia with a profit of £370.50. That she's going to split between taking her family out for a meal and a donation to a mental health charity. With one sale under her belt, Sarah's in London to find out if leather legend Uzo managed to work with the canvas from the old army camp bed and produce two tote bags. I'm just interested to see Sarah's reaction when she sees the finished product because um, she doesn't know I've dyed the actual canvas yet. I hope she likes it. Let's see. Well, I know you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear, but I'm really hoping you can make tote bags out of an old camp bed. Uzo, though, has got really exacting standards about the material he uses, so I hope he's been happy working with mine. When old army equipment is finished serving its country, it often serves no more purpose. Unless Uzo is enlisted to help. Uzo kept calm and carried on to produce a pair of practical tote bags. Salvaging every usable piece of canvas, Uzo has dyed it to make the body of the bags and accessorised it with new leather handles and straps. With two pockets on the front and one inside, they're practical bags able to carry your shopping or are big and stylish enough to pack clothes and toiletries for a weekend away. Uzo wanted to accentuate the rugged feel of the canvas while adding an elegant edge. But will the newly coloured canvas and leather additions be what Sarah's expecting? Uzo, hi. Ooh, wow, they look amazing. Have they changed colour? A little bit. They look really fresh. You've got this kind of like amazing camouflage look going on. What have you been doing to it? So my initial thought was to wax it, but I thought let's give it a bit more vibrant colour. So I've dyed it and it's given it quite a bit of a textured look. They look really lovely. So I see two big bags made out of the, the bed. Yeah, so really pleased with it, actually. I measured up and I could get two bags out of it because when you left, I wasn't too sure. And we did speak about some wash bags, but Luckily enough, I could get two large totes out of this. I see you've added some lovely details to it. But so what is what have you got in it? Pockets and that sort of thing? So what I've done, I've made two pockets. I even added some internal leather pockets on the inside. So it's got some more function on the inside, but also a very large open compartment. I actually think, you know, you're calling them a tote bag, but I think that's a great bag for going away for the weekend. I think people will own those and want to show them off because they are lovely, rugged, robust-looking bags. And so, budget-wise, did you get on OK? £125 each, weren't they? Yeah, so, I mean, on budget, 250 for the pair. Brilliant. Lovely-looking bags. Well done. They're super cute. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Thanks ever so much for that. Thanks, Sarah. I'm quite happy with that. Well, I was happy with the bag, but it's also great when... It's appreciated. So, yeah, very pleased with that. Two big, beautiful bags in there, and I love what Uzo's done to that canvas. The colour is great, and the accessories just finish them perfectly. Hello there. At the recycling centre, Sarah spied Tim's bootful. It's uh, an old army camp bed. It was used by my wife's grandfather. Tim had given it a go. I find it gets very cold in the winter because you've got a draft underneath and there's no padding between you and the cold ground. So Sarah took it to transform, but into what? I don't know. <laughs> I'd be scratching my head. Well, Tim, 
Uzo's handiwork was certainly up to scratch, because after the bags were advertised, they were bought by private buyers in the USA. Sarah's in Canesham to show Tim the transformation and hand over some cash. Tim. Hi. Hello, Hi. nice to see you, you again. I'm very well, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Enjoying the weather. I've been looking forward to coming to find you. I've never taken something quite like the old bed that came out of your back of your garage. <laughs> I can't imagine what, what you're going to do with that, to be honest. It was something that caught my eye and I just thought there must be something that we can do yeah. with it. Uh, I had to call in the help of a friend, though. Uh, there is an amazing uh, craftsman in London called Uzo and he specialises in using leather and canvas to make bags. Bags? Bags. So yeah. I've got some pictures here to show you what he's been up to. Oh. Uh, your canvas bed is now a couple of tote bags. They look lovely. They, they look surprisingly lovely, actually. I think they're really good. I'm glad you like them. He's given them a new look, so he has actually taken the fabric. I don't know if you noticed, it's changed colour slightly. Um, he's hand-dyed yeah. it. He's added um, some nice smart leather accessories to yeah, them. Yeah. And he's kept all of the seams and the old bits of the bed that were there useful. That's really so... clever. Very nice. Very nice. Well, I was pleased with the result, and actually those pictures were shared, and they've gone off to America, actually. <laughs> uh, so they've, in America? In America, yeah, they've been on their travels. And I've got a profit of £100 for your old bed. Wow. <laughs> what might you do with the money? Any thoughts? Well, I was thinking about that, and I thought, because it was actually a bed that belonged to my wife's grandmother, she had a milestone birthday in June, which we didn't really manage to mark at the time, so we're hoping that we, maybe we can use this towards that. Oh, that would be lovely. I can't think of anything nicer than spending time with friends and, and family, and I'm so pleased the little bed is going to help towards that. I, I think that'll be a very nice evening out. <laughs> Excellent. Well, do enjoy yourselves, and thank you very much for letting me come and thank find you today. Thank you very today. much, Sarah. Nice to see you, Tim. Thanks, bye -bye. Sarah. Take care. Uzo came in on budget at £250. Both totes were sold for a total of £350, giving Tim a profit of £100 that he's going to put towards a birthday treat for his wife. Just outside Edinburgh, Sarah's on her way to find out if Kev's managed to transform the rusty gate and drain cover. This was a, a good project to work on. I got a wee bit excited and I went a wee bit OTT. Hopefully, when Sarah arrives, she'll, she'll appreciate what I've done, but I'm happy with the result. That's what Sarah is too. £900 for a gate. £900 for a gate. What do you reckon? £900 for a gate? Will it be all right? When Sarah found them, it was the end of the road for the old gate and drain cover. But now... Kev has merged them to create a brand new gate with double the charm. He took inspiration from the humble bindweed which now adorns the frame, with each bell-shaped bloom hand-forged for metal offcuts. Kev used every piece of the original gate to create the tall and narrow structure and the weeds and vines that wrap around it. The old drain cover has been positioned as the focal point of the gate, with Kev hoping to show that the beauty of nature can spring from the most unlikely of places. It's a big transformation, but will Sarah be impressed? Tell me that's my gate. It's my gate, isn't it? That's your gate. I always know to expect something amazing when I come here, but that is really beautiful. What have you done to it? Um, just went OTT, as, as usual for me. Um... I can see you've put an awful lot of time and effort into it, and it's certainly paid off. It looks amazing. The heavier of these bars, that was the original gate, and obviously the manhole cover, the drain cover's not really been altered. I really like the fact that you've left the little drain cover looking so authentic. It says made in England, but we all know it was perfected in Scotland. <laughs> OK, I'm going to give you that. I worry sometimes about leaving big budgets on things, you know, creeping up towards £1,000, but you've certainly earned your money on that one. Where is the budget? I think it was creeping towards £900. I'm happy on that. You've given it a life and a story, and it looks fantastic. I'm actually blown away. I think it's beautiful. No worries. Nice to see you again. Bye-bye. See you later, Sarah. Bye. Sarah was, like, over the moon with the transformation. It was a lot of work, and it's quite unusual, but Sarah's way happy, so it makes me happy. That man is not a blacksmith, he's an alchemist. He's turned rubbish into solid gold. Hello. 
Hello there. Nice gate. At the recycling centre, Sarah spied James and William unloading. It's been our front gate for 17, 18 years. The drain cover was up for grabs too. We've just done the patio and uh, got a nice new shiny cover. So Sarah grabbed them both and took them to be transformed. The gate is old, so we look forward to seeing what she does with it. Well, it was Kev that cobbled them together, and after the gate was advertised, it was sold to a private buyer. Sarah's in Bath to show James and William the outcome and pass along the profit. Hi, how's it going? Nice to see you again. I knew I was in the right place. You've got a really smart new gate out there, haven't you? Yeah, very nice. Well, I thought your gate was definitely worth taking. It's something you'd known for years, wasn't it? So were you sorry to see it go? Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> it needed replacing. It'd be interesting to see what you've done with it. Well, actually, it's been on a bit of a journey. It's been up to Scotland to a fantastic blacksmith uh, called Kev. What do you think? Any ideas what we might have done? I thought you might make a better gate, or so I couldn't really think what else you would do with it, to be honest. Better gates. That's pretty much what we went for. I really? hope you can still see yours in here, but it now looks like that. Whoa. Amazing. So it is another gate? Yep. You're a right whale. So he's actually incorporated the old drain cover, and his idea was to have it as almost like it that was the pavement bit, and then all the flowers are rising up out of it. And I think you can still see all the bits of your gate that were there, all the bars, and he's repurposed some of them to make fixings for a new design on the front of it. He's done an amazing job. Do you like it? Can wow. we have it back? <laughs> Is it sold? So I love it when people say they'd like to have it back, but you can't because it's found a new home. It's gone off to a private buyer and it's installed and in her home. I wouldn't have ever thought it would come out. That well. That, that well, yeah. So I've got profit here. £525 for you. No way. Are you joking? <laughs> what do you reckon? Did you think a five or a bit more? No, I didn't think nowhere near over a hundred, to be honest. But that's quite a good uh, <laughs> all in a day's work. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Money there that you weren't expecting, but what might you do with it? Well, I think we will donate some to charity. Yep. Um, but we're also buying some more gates, so we'll put some towards the new gates as well for the drive. So is there a, a charity that you normally support? Probably be a cancer one, because we have lost um, family members to cancer. Oh, well, I'm very sorry to hear that, and uh, that's a great cause to support. And new gates as well. I'll tell Kev, he's going to be pleased. Yeah, thank you very much. That's been great. Nice to see you both. Yeah, and Thanks you. ever so much. Thanks, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Kev's costs came to £900. The gate was sold for £1,425, giving James and William a profit of £525 that they're going to put towards a new gate and a donation to a cancer charity. Sarah saved three items from the skips. The tulip table bloomed into a light, bright beauty. The camp bed became totes amazing tote bags. And with the addition of the drain cover, the gate is now in full swing. Well, Uzo and Kev have certainly made the best out of those old items. Things that were going to be skipped have been repurposed and revitalised. That is a lovely bit of recycling.